All right, so I'm going to go over the new Amtec VS213AF Tacky Flux. Um, we just got this in. Uh, this is Amtec's latest and greatest version of the of their Flux. Uh, everybody was using the NC559V2 Tacky Flux um, up until now. I think everybody's going to probably start using the new version of it. Uh, I'm going to show you why. The new version is better than the old version uh, in this video, and I'm going to kind of go over what <clears throat> some of the differences are of this new Flux. Um, so, the VS213A TF <clears throat> is billed as the Universal No Clean Tacky Solder Flux. VS213 ATF is the most recent and most up to date no clean tacky flux formulation by Amtec. This flux performs at par with best selling no clean roll zero fluxes. However, it is uplifted with some highly desirable modern add ons missing from its grand counterparts. The grand counterparts are uh, is the NC559 ASM slash v2 uh, both of those are the same fluxes um, so it's just a new and updated version of it uh, and it supports both leaded and lead free alloys it retains all greatly admired Amtec no clean context industrial wetting capabilities optimal tech viscosity long lasting performance clear residue and easy cleaning so and easy cleaning is no joke um, I'm gonna do an iPad mini repair here. iPad mini digitizer connector repair with this new flux. So looking under the microscope, this is a really disgusting looking iPad mini. It's got some hairs uh, taped down below the connector and I don't know what kind of hairs they are but they're a little bit thicker than normal. You can draw your own conclusions as to where they came from. But that's not the point of this video. So let's get the new flux. This is the VS two one three A two F, and as you can see, coming out of the tip, it's already a little bit uh, more liquidy. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when uh, you know with the NC five five nine, it's really hard to get it out of the tip, right? Sometimes you just it gets stuck, and you have to like really push the tip and it, you have to open it it's, it's a mess so here I have some low melt solder I just put it on the end of my JBC NA, NASC 1B and I like to put low melt on my connector before removing it uh, just to make it a little bit easier to remove uh, I don't know you can call it rookie or whatever but I just that's what I like doing it takes five seconds to do and it makes it a lot easier to remove so that's what I'm doing if you don't like it you can go shove it So I'm going to set my hot air rework station to 400 degrees Celsius with airflow of 17. That is my standard working uh, temperature and airflow. Every unit is different, so you may be at 360, you may be at 320, you may be at 500, <laughs> whatever it is. Whatever it takes to get it off without destroying stuff. So while I'm heating this up to get the connector off, I'm going to talk a little bit about our online forum here. We created a free micro soldering forum where you can ask questions and I will personally answer all of your questions if they're posted on the forum. Um, I know Lewis and Jessa has both have forum paid forums. They charge about 29 bucks each. Mine is going to be free. <laughs> I don't dispute their business model, but I don't, uh, I don't know. Uh, I can understand they get a lot of questions and stuff like that. And I actually, well, I actually did pay for Lewis's forum as well, just to see what's going on. I did have a MacBook question, and I don't mind paying for advice. Uh, because I'm not very seasoned with MacBook repairs. But, yeah, I just don't think it's a very, maybe, I don't know, maybe he's making some money off it, but I just don't think it's, I think it's probably more beneficial. SEO wise to have a free micro soldering forum so 
that is my intention. My intention is to put them out of business. No, I'm kidding. Uh, well, I just don't think it's wise. Maybe if I had more subscribers or more members of the forum, then maybe I'd charge. But I, that's highly doubtful. I think I'll, I think it'll always be free. Okay, so now I have. So, anyways, I was gonna say that if you have a question on YouTube, if you post it on YouTube, sometimes I answer, sometimes I don't. If you post it on the micro soldering forum, then I will definitely answer it. And why am I talking like that? I don't know. All right, so the connector is off now. I'm gonna get some 6337 lead did solder, and I'm just gonna tin the pads here, and then I'm gonna wick it. I like wicking the pads because there's still a little bit of low melt left on it. And I like to clean it all up before I get started. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so I just have my JBC Nano Tweezers, and I clamp down on my 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 wick. The wick I normally use is it's we sold sell on our website. It's what is it like 0.2 millimeter? I can't remember what it's called, but just go to the website and take a look if you want to know the wick that we use. So everything's wicked. I'm gonna use a some 99% IPA and on the end of a Q-tip and clean all this. And as you can see, look how clean it is. I mean, there's really after this is all all said and done, there's very very little residue left on this thing. And that's the beauty of the new VS213 Tacky Flux. It's, uh, like they said, it's more viscous and it's easier to clean. And that is true. So I'm going to put a little more on now and I'm going to tin the pads and then put the connector back on. So I'm sure if you you know if you do micro soldering for a living, I'm sure you've done a ton of these already. There's, there's really nothing special to it. Um, everybody does it differently, but this is actually still a pretty challenging repair for someone who's just starting off. So I'm gonna tin the pads right now. So I just put a little bit of solder at the end of my tip here, and uh, <clears throat> you really want to put a good amount of solder at the end of the you know the four. Uh, posts and then just be cautious of putting too much on the ground pads because the ground pads tend to hold a little more solder than than other pads so just be cautious of that you don't want too much solder on there you, you really just want to wet it a little bit so that when you, when you put the connector on it'll be a little bit easier to put on okay so I'm gonna back this up a little bit maybe you get a better view of uh, what I'm doing here So, <clears throat> I've made a million of these videos, but I haven't made one in a long time, just because. So, like I said, this is still a pretty challenging repair. Um, one of the big challenges is really the end posts. So, what I do is I just use my micro tweezers, uh, put some 6337 uh, leaded solder on there, and then I really just kind of tap it. And then just let it kind of flow into the into the metal uh, part of the connector. And it's very and just make sure you have ample flux. And you see that it just creates a very very solid joint. And um, if you're doing it for the first time, you're gonna notice that that little metal tab pops out every once in a while. And it just you have to redo everything. So this is the method that I choose, and this is the method that's easiest for me. And then with my tweezers still a little bit wet. I just kind of, yeah, it's very simple. I mean, when you have the right tools to do these things, it's it's a lot, lot easier. As you can see, I got one whole side done already, done. And I'm using 0.1 millimeter tips, which makes it a lot, lot easier. And then this one, same same deal. You just, boom, you just kind of put it in there and just make, you know, make sure that tab doesn't pop up. So you can kind of push down your tweezers on it a little bit if you want. And basically, once the solder from your tips touch the solder on the pad, it'll just kind of 
liquefy and then go directly up to the connector and make a solid joint. And that's so with the the pins on the right side, you just want to make sure that you leave enough space for it uh, when you solder the other side. So because this is where the tight quarters are. So same here. You just start. You just go and just make sure you have a nice, very solid, shiny joint. You always want solid, shiny joints. And if you're using the right equipment, then it's going to be very easy. If you're not using the right equipment, it's going to be a little bit harder. Okay, so I'm done with everything. Uh, I can tell that all the joints are really, really nice uh, because I see they're all shiny. Now, here's the beauty of the VS213A Techiflux. Um, I'm going to set my hot air rework station to 200 or 250 degrees Celsius with an airflow of 59. So basically, low, lower heat, higher airflow. I'm going to put some 99% IPA on the end of my queue, a lot of 99% IPA, and really just brush it away. And look how easily this flux is coming off. The NC559, it's very oily, and uh, it's very hard to get rid of it after, after, it's, um, after it's on. But with the VS213, it pretty much disappears. Um, if you've done one of these before, then you, you'll know that with NC559, the, the flux kind of stays inside the connector and under it. It's really hard to remove. So I'm going to take the tape off now and I'm going to show you <laughs> once it's all cleaned up and how easily and how easy it is and how easy it is to work with really. So another Q-tip with some more IPA in a dry, the other side of the Q-tips can be dried but Basically, yeah, just kind of wash it away. It's like water. Look at it. It's nice. And once the alcohol dries, it's going to be nice and clean. So, if if you were using NC559, there's no you would still see residue underneath the connector. And but with the new with the new stuff, it's all gone pretty much. You know. So, I, this is what I'm going to be using ongoing. Um, I don't. Once I run out of the NC559, I won't be using that anymore. Um, and I think this is probably this is the stuff that you should be using as well, because it's going to make cleaning a lot easier, and uh, you know maybe future problems um, can be avoided. So I'm going to test all the pins here now. I just do a little poke on it, and this one is a little bit loose, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Uh, so the pad, okay, so I'm going to go back to that one, but let's test all the pins first. And I'm going to diode mode it, actually. I'm going to diode mode that one pad that's that's uh, kind of loose. So I'm going to make sure I'm getting solid connection. That is actually not the right one. It's actually the one below that that's loose. So I'm going to diode mode it. As long as I'm getting a good diode mode, I'm not going to worry about it because... The pad actually connects on the inside. It's it's in the middle of the connector, so sometimes it just pops up a little bit, but it's not a big deal. So long as it's still connected, we're good. So diode mode tests out fine, and that's really about it. I mean, look how clean it is there. I mean, you don't have to worry about uh, giving it back to the customer and having all this residue under it. So if you don't own some some of this new Amtech stuff, I would definitely consider buying some. You can go to our store, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then you can buy the new flux. And again, it is BS213A Tacky Flux. And this is the new stuff that you should be using. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.
my videos on YouTube. I just want to talk to you about our online video course hosted at udemy.com. If you go to microsoldering.com and click on store, uh, while it loads, click on micro soldering the full curriculum. So you can see we have discounted the price to $99.99. And if you click on this, you'll see that it contains three and a half hours of online video instruction instructions on how to get started in micro soldering. And we're also offering a certificate now. So after you complete the course, just email us at support at microsoldering.com and we will send you a certificate, a signed certificate with your name on it that you can display on in your store if you want. Um, again, three and a half hours of video instruction. Um, we also have a forum now which you can post your questions and we will answer it as quickly as possible. It's a free forum, no charge for it. Um, the course is $99.99. Uh, just click on this link and that'll give you the discount because if you go through udemy.com directly, it's going to be $149.99. So thanks for watching. If you want to learn how to do this stuff, then go buy this online course. Thanks. Bye.